Uh, from statistics, we understand that about 900,000 of Nigerian youth sit for JAM. And only 300,000 of them are given admissions into our Nigerian government-owned institution. I just want to know, what's your, what's your take on this one? Um, well, for me, it's not totally JAM's, um, how do I say it? Not totally JAM's fault. Okay. If the students prepare well enough, they will get the cut-up mark and then get admission into school. That's one. I have, like my daughter wrote, wrote jam. She made up the cut-up mark. She surpassed it. But then her SSC is one subject is outstanding. And it's not an, she's not eligible for admission. Do you understand? And it's not, you don't look at it from just one perspective. Look at the students also. Some students don't even get to the cut-up mark. So what can JAM do? JAM is not going to force anybody to give admission. Do you understand? So I think that's... Uh, going forward, Ma, I just want to ask, don't you feel since JAM maybe probably already have this number of provision, why didn't they sell out that number of form? Instead of, you know, of look at the margin. Extra, yes. Extra forms. Yes, that's true. But you know that even if they sold out if we look at it on this angle, if they sold out a particular number of forms, it means that they are limiting students. If, if some students are eligible for admission, they are actually limiting people from getting admission into school. So give and take. You either take, you write the jam, prepare for it well, and make your grades. But right now, there are other options like my daughter is writing A-levels. At least if she cannot get in with the SSC and she has a problem with um, uh, one subject, there's other alternatives. And that's why there are other alternatives to JAM. Do you understand? So there's diploma, there's everything. People should not limit themselves. I think we are in a digital age and there are other routes to institutions, to higher level.